Let's look at vector fields. A vector field in R2, in other words, two-dimensional space, is a function that assigns to each point x, y a two-dimensional vector, f of x, y. Now we've seen vector-valued functions. The input is a real number, and the output is a vector. The velocity vector that we saw earlier is like that. Here, the input is two-dimensional, and the output is also two-dimensional. For instance, sketch a graph of the vector field f of x, y equals negative y, comma, x. Let's say x and y go from negative 2 to 2. So here's what we're looking at. Here's our point x, y, negative 2, comma, negative 2, negative 2, and f of x, y is going to be negative y, comma, x. So in this case, since y is negative 2, okay, this will be negative y, in other words, it's 2, and since x is negative 2, this will be uh, x, negative 2. Here, we get negative y, which is negative, negative 2, or just plain 2, and x. x, in this case, is negative 1. Here, again, uh, negative y is 2. Uh, negative y is going to be uh, negative, negative 2. And x, in this case, will be 0. So we do that for all of these points, and we end up with these vectors. Okay. Now, we plot each of those vectors at those points. So here's what we've got. At the point negative 2, negative 2, which is right here, we plot the vector 2, negative 2. Okay, so it's going to go like this. That's the vector 2, negative 2. At the point negative 1, negative 2, uh, negative 1, negative 2 is going to be over here, uh, we plot the vector 2, negative 1. So again, you go over 2, eh, it's going to look like this. And we continue doing this. Lastly, for the vector, or at the point 0, negative 2, which would be over here, we'd plot the vector 2, 0, which would be this vector. And we do that for all of these points. And if you use Desmos to do this, here's what you get. You get a much cooler diagram. Looks like a swirl. Looks like something going down a toilet. Cool swirls. Okay, a vector field in R3 is a function that assigns to each point x, y, z a three-dimensional vector f of x, y, z. So it's analogous to what we just saw a moment ago. For instance, sketch a graph of the vector field f of x, y, z equals z, k. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So anyway, for any point x, y, z, we're going to plot the vector 0, 0, z. That's another way of writing z, k. z, k is the same thing as 0, 0, z. Okay, notice that there's no x and y in here. So really, you could have anything, anything, 1, and that's just going to be 0, 0, 1. You'd have anything, anything, anything for x and y, 2, and you'll end up with 0, 0, 2. Anything, anything, negative 1, you'll plot the vector 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot this. So in three dimensions, so let's say anything, anything, 1. So in other words, as long as z is 1, you're going to plot the vector 0, 0, 1. So wherever z is 1, so anywhere in this plane, z equals 1, you're going to get a vector of length 1. So it's going to look like that. And anything, anything 2, so anywhere on this plane, z equals 2, you're going to get a vector 0, 0, 2. So you're going to end up with a vector that's twice as long. And then similarly, at anything, anything negative 1, so this plane down here, you're going to get the vector 0, 0, negative 1. So it's just vector 0, 0, negative 1 from there. Okay, if you use GeoGebra to do this, which is available online, here's what you get. Very cool diagram, much cooler than what we graphed. So, yep, so again, this is how we plot 0, 0, z. That's how you'd enter it in GeoGebra. Let's look at some examples of vector fields. Gravitational field is a vector field. So let's say you have an object here. What these vectors show is the gravi gravitational attraction between that object and an object that's, let's say, here, or here, or here. Notice that close by objects, um, for close by objects, the vector is longer. In other words, the gravitational attraction is stronger. So if you have an object here, notice the gravitational attraction is pointing towards the origin. Uh, whereas if you have an object here, yeah, the gravitational attraction is still pulling towards the origin, but it's, it's, the magnitude is smaller, it's just not as strong. Have an electric field. So here we have a positively positively charged particle, and these show, you know, this will show the uh, uh, the field of attraction, electric attraction. Same thing with a magnetic field. This is a horseshoe magnet and iron filings. Very cool. Now, really, you can use a vector field for anything for which the magnitude and direction vary depending on where you are. 
So for example, atmospheric winds. Here we are at Chicago. Okay, that shows what the wind would be like, but the winds would be stronger um, over here. Yeah, notice these are longer. Winds would be less intense over here. And these are just generally showing the directions of the winds. How about winds in a wind tunnel? Here's a GIF that I want to show you. This is cool. Okay, let me show you this one. Oh, sorry. Okay, what we need is, we need not the pen, but the arrow. Okay, so check those out. That's neat. Okay, and lastly, ocean currents. This is off the coast of Virginia. So here we have Norfolk and uh, Newport News and Hampton, and you can see the ocean currents here. Here's another example of a vector field. Um, if f of x, y is a real valued function, not a vector valued function, then the gradient, uh, f sub x, f sub y is a vector field. It's called the gradient vector field.